This is the Vodafone Smart First 7. It is a 15 pound smartphone, which over in the US translates to about $19, and let me tell you what it can do for that price is genuinely incredible. So we're going to kick things off with a quick unboxing of the product. As you expect, nothing fancy in terms of packaging for that price, but nonetheless, still pretty clean looking box. Tells you the specifications on the back, the phone is on top, so we'll put that to the side. Take a look at the things you really came here for. Of course, the instruction manuals. Having said that, they are actually quite nice. They've got this nice, consistent, recycled cardboard kind of theme, which on most cases looks cheap, but it is done quite well here. We've got a pretty compact 1400 milliamp hour battery here, which, to give you some sort of perspective, is less than half of what we see on most flagship devices, and some pretty poorly packaged earphones. They look like they were in a little bit of a rush when they finished this. We've got a micro USB cable for charging, and then a pretty ancient looking mains adapter. So here's the phone, and first impressions, honestly amazing. Like it's very difficult to quite comprehend how cheap this phone is, and therefore there is almost no competition at this price point. Having said that, comparing it to ultra cheap sort of $50, $70 smartphones, and in terms of its build quality, you really can't tell the difference. The back is made up of these tiny little hexagonal shapes, and these make fingerprints less likely to show up, and they also add a nice bit of grip to the back of the phone. And surprisingly, it's not completely bland. The phone does have a little bit of an aggressive design language. It adds a little bit of personality to an otherwise rather dull body. And to get one thing out the way, this is a really, really thick phone. You could fit two flagship devices, one on top of the other, and they would still only be marginally thicker. The good thing is though, is that because of the small size of the smartphone, it's still completely usable in one hand. On the subject of its small size, the screen is a mere 3.5 inches which does sound tiny, and it is tiny by today's phone standards, but sometimes it is easy to forget that at the time of Android's release, most smartphones were this size. And therefore it's nice to see that it is running a completely full version of the software, there aren't any cutbacks here, this isn't a sort of sub operating system, the only downside is that it is Android 5.1. So yes, it is a bit of a disappointment that this phone is more than two years out of date when it comes to its software, but a lot of the time you don't notice it. It still looks and feels very well optimised for the display, and I didn't actually find too many app compatibility issues due to the software. And whilst it isn't going to offer you a premium smartphone experience, I never felt completely limited by the screen size. Even when you're typing, for example, you're definitely much slower than you would be on a larger screen phone, but it's completely workable, it's not like you have to downgrade and use a different style keyboard. With a resolution of 320 by 480 probably a figure you've not heard in quite a few years, this is not a pretty display. It also, with the TFT LCD technology, has some pretty abominable viewing angles, but at the same time, you can't help but be impressed in a certain way. It's a completely capacitive 5 point touch smartphone display, and there definitely have been times when engaging with content on the phone that you completely forget it's a 15 pound smartphone, which is definitely a plus point for this guy. It does also tick a lot of boxes, we've got a completely removable back and battery, we've got support for SD cards, although having said that only 4GB internally, we've got a notification LED, we've got a headphone jack, and we've got a rear camera as well, which again, for £15, kinda seems like a bit of a bargain. Now, when I first saw the name of the CPU inside this product, I thought it was going to be a whole new level of awful. But to be honest, aside from a little bit of input delay, it generally exceeded my expectations. Scoring over 17,000 on Antutu makes it actually a serviceable product when it comes to gaming, especially considering it doesn't need to push many pixels at all. While some games do completely fail to load, the vast majority of titles actually work on the device. So almost any sort of simple 2D title, and to be honest a lot that I wasn't expecting this thing to be able to play, actually work quite well. Now given the small screen and given the low resolution, most games are a little bit harder to play than on their larger counterparts, and if you are going to play online you will probably get shredded, but given our initial expectations, it was generally a positive experience. So I kind of expected there was going to be a bit of a battery problem when I read 1400 milliamp hours on the packaging, but I thought maybe the low power components would make up for it. Whilst they do somewhat, it is still a pretty poor battery. If you are conservative with it, you'll be able to get your full day's usage, but this is not meant for people to be playing games all day. In terms of cameras, we don't have one on the front of the device, but the rear does have a 2 megapixel sensor. And to be honest, given its 2 megapixel capacity, it's not terrible. It has a completely fixed focus, so that means you can't tap somewhere on the screen to manually focus on an area, and you can't even change your exposure, let alone anything more complicated. Having said that, in a lot of scenarios, whilst it is significantly lacking in contrast, you really can't tell the difference between the camera on this smartphone and one costing three times as much. The video at 720p was not the highest resolution, but at the same time a little bit more stable than I was expecting. So guys, that is the Vodafone Smart First 7. 
Truly, it's a miracle for £15, and the only conclusion I can come to as to how they've managed to fit all this into a £15 package is the fact that it must be subsidised in some way. So Vodafone will lower the price of the smartphone, maybe even below what its cost is, I imagine that's probably true in this case, just so that it hopes to make the money back when you buy their pay-as-you-go packages. It is actually possible though to get around this by unlocking the bootloader, therefore giving you a £15 or $19 smartphone that genuinely works pretty good. With that being said guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video, I'm Mr. He's the Boss, and I'm signing out.